and welcome to this episode of Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, and today we're going to talk about public works, um, which doesn't sound like a very exciting topic, but our new public work director, Tony Reyes, will make it sound exciting, I promise you. <laughs> welcome, Tony. Good to have you here today. Hey, thank you, Robin. I'm happy to be here. And you are not a new face to Hampton in general, even though you're with the city for fairly recently, a few months now, right? Yes, I joined the city on January 3rd, uh, 2012, but uh, prior to that, uh, I was the post commander at Fort Monroe uh, since May of 2008. And then prior to that, of course, uh, I was here some 30 some odd years ago as a uh, student at Hampton, so. Ah, so awesome where are you from, from, Tony? I am from East Orange, New Jersey. All right, and you then came to Hampton, I bet it was Hampton Institute then? As a matter of fact, yes, a proud graduate of Hampton, and, and, and I was actually in the last class that carried the uh, distinction of uh, the name of Hampton Institute oh, in 1984. Wow. And so did you start your Army career immediately after that? Started my Army uh, career immediately following graduation uh, by trade, a field artillery officer, so went, uh, actually left right out of Hampton and went to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, where I began my, uh, my Army career. Now, we can't go through your whole Army career, but just tell us a couple of highlights, maybe. I would probably say, uh, first of all, the last 10 years, were spent in uh, installation management, which is why I have found myself at the, uh, the job that I'm in today, and what pretty much gave me the background to be able to do the job that I'm in today. Uh, but to give you some highlights, uh, the last few years uh, spent as a War College Fellowship, uh, Senior Fellowship Program in Washington, D.C., uh, where I was a senior fellow there. Uh, left that job and uh, then transitioned into becoming the Army uh, Diversity Officer. So I, I, I was responsible for the entire diversity program for the, uh, for the United States Army and all of the components wow. that were tied in. That's so a big job. That was hugely challenging because we, it also included standing up that office. And uh, I had that job for 18 months uh, prior to being uh, selected to come in command at Fort Monroe and uh, I did talk a little bit earlier about uh, being in installation management for the last 10 years. So as a lieutenant colonel, I also commanded Fort Monmouth in New Jersey. So I got to go back to my home state and do that. So uh, kind of uh, a very nice uh, period for me to be able to command both in my home state of New Jersey and then what I consider my, uh, my new home of uh, Hampton. So when you came to Fort Monroe, was that after the closure had already been decided or was it before that? Uh, no, it was actually after the closure had been decided and, and some people would tend to ask you, well, why in the world would you want to uh, take an assignment at a place that's already- You know where already, the end date is, yeah, right. You're been managing targeted. it down. That's, that's a hard thing to do. Absolutely, and, and, and some of the, the mentors I've had over the years uh, as I discussed that topic with them uh, said that, you know, we have to have experts in our army that understand the base realignment and closure process as well. And uh, so uh, many of my mentors thought it was still a great idea to uh, come to a place like Fort Monroe because we don't have enough experts in our army regarding base realignment and closure. Uh, just as another side note, I have been trying to get an assignment at Fort Monroe pretty much my entire army career because uh -huh. uh, once again, I just, I just love the area, love the people the hospitality. So it was a natural fit for me. And the fact that, the, that uh, Fort Benoit had already been designated for BRAC uh, really did not steer me away from still wanting to come back and, uh, and have an assignment here. Well, one of the things I think about that process that I noticed is that you had so much contact with the city of Hampton that it yes. was really very much a partnership effort. You had to work with the state, you had to work obviously with the Army, and you had to run the base while it was still in operation, but there was so much back and forth and community involvement that obviously you, uh, you got to know city officials pretty well during that time period. Uh, absolutely, and I, and I think it, it, it's part of any installation command job, you, you've got to be joined at the hip with the uh, community that's immediately outside of your gate. Uh, it's got to be a partnership. Uh, you're serving the people that are on your installation, but 
part of the people that are working uh, for your installation and that live there still have a lot of interaction outside the gate. So uh, it kind of crosses over and you have to make sure if you're going to be successful in any command on any for any installation that you have that kind of great relationship with the uh, city leaders outside. And I was blessed to be able to uh, to work with a dynamic team from the city of Hampton. No, you must be. You must have uh, liked that team enough that you agreed to come to work with them afterwards. So. Well, well, I think that's a great. I think it was a great opportunity for me, and it just kind of fell in place. Uh, having an installation to command is is, is just like uh, having a city within a city, and so you get to touch on all of those things that are. Uh, that are issues or concerns, you get to work all of those. So it kind of sets you up to be able to transition nicely into something like public works. And, and, and when I think about my career in the Army uh, versus what I'm doing now, it, it's always been about people. And uh, I, I feel like I left a great team uh, of people uh, with, with my Army family, but I also feel like I've joined a fantastic team of people with the city of Hampton, and specifically in public works. They are just great people that remind me of working with soldiers because uh, they're doing some tough jobs that a lot of people don't really understand or recognize on a regular basis, and I hope we can get that more out in front uh, during my tenure there. Oh, that's interesting. I never would have thought of that comparison. Of course, I've never really worked with soldiers, but it is their sort of, you don't see them. You right. know that they do very important things, but as long as they do them well, you really don't think about it because that, it's running so smoothly. That is exactly right. Uh, the, the, most of the time when you have to interact with a lot of the people that are on my team, you've got a problem at your <laughs> residence and you've got something that's that you want true. fixed immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these things aren't pretty problems. Uh, you think about some of my so my solid waste team, or you think about uh, some of my team that works in the drainage uh, area or in the ditch maintenance uh, or in our pump houses. None of those things uh, are you going to really think about on a regular basis, but if something fails in that area, you will want somebody out there almost immediately, and you'll be happy while they're out there taking care of the problem, and when they're gone, it's almost out of sight, out of mind. So I would love, I would love to see uh, the people on the Public Works team get a little bit more visibility for, for what it is they do, and I'd love for the, a lot of the citizens in the city to be able to understand a lot of what goes into the kind of work that they do. Well, I will say, it was before you came on board with the city, but obviously you were still here, but during, not even, well, during, but also mostly right after Hurricane Irene, right. I will say that the Public Works crew in Hampton did an amazing job yes. of working 12-hour shifts and, and six or seven days a week to get that debris cleaned up. We got, I'm sure you heard some of the comments Absolutely. since you've been here, but I know our Facebook was just overwhelmed with people thanking the, those public works folks for getting out there and doing it so quickly. Some of the neighboring localities had contractors and they weren't able to get started right away. And I went actually with a crew for a little bit of period of time and watched. Sometimes when people piled up all the debris at the curb, that, <laughs> that guy with the claw would kind of go through and knock it out so that he was able to take the things that could be composted to the compost facility Absolutely. and not take, you know, the screens and the, and the other debris that couldn't. And when the homeowners didn't <laughs> make two piles, sometimes, uh, sometimes the trash folks did. And it was their commitment, not just to cleaning up, but to doing it as well as they could for the environment and for Absolutely. the citizen that just really impressed so many people. And, and, and you know, I think what, what, what's very special about what you just said is, uh, and it gets back to, again, the people. Uh, they're great people, but they're also passionate. They're very passionate about what they do. And sometimes that's hard to find. And when you have a team that's got the passion, you've got to do everything in your power to take care of them and to try to keep them on the team. So that, that's probably, what a, probably my primary goal is to take care of those people because uh, if you look at, look at it from that standpoint, they are the people who are charged with taking care of our citizens. Mm -hmm. So I've got to first direct my attention to ensure that those people on my team are taken care of. So I tend to think of that group first when I think of public works, but obviously streets and roads are a, a huge oh factor of what you do. Um, and I know from reading the citizen surveys that they want the roads paved more often and, um, and patched more often and the, the, the condition of roads, and I know that's a very costly 
endeavor that we do. Well, it's funny when you talk about streets, and I haven't got to talk about my engineers either who are tasked with doing some very intricate work at their level, but when you think about uh, the paving piece, you hit a very good point because one of the things we also want to do is to, to launch an effort where we are communicating a lot more. We're going to ask you to help us with that. Right, right. But we're going to work gonna, together on that. Exactly. We're going to want to do some things on our website that actually uh, present what I call one-on-one briefings where we will actually detail the work that we do do for our citizens. And uh, we also want to put on our website the order of merit, so to speak, list up there so that people will understand when we're going to be in their areas doing a certain type of work. We also want to be able to educate our citizens and let them know what it takes uh, in order to get paving done in your neighborhood. Streets have to meet a certain criteria in order to make the list or the schedule for doing paving in the neighborhoods. I'm not sure all of our citizens understand how that evaluation takes place, so part of our education effort will include that. And so part of what you try to do is figure out not by political priority of what neighborhoods are most important, but really looking at the conditions of the roads and making that very empirical decision. Absolutely, we want to. We, it's called going from worst to first. That's what we want to do. There's 10 neighborhoods in, uh, in, in Hampton, and all full of very proud people who actually care a lot about their neighborhoods, as they should, uh, but we are charged with taking care of all of the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So part of our education effort has to be to ensure that everyone understands our criteria for going in and doing certain types of work in these neighborhoods. It just can't be about the last time that you saw a paving truck in your neighborhood. It has to be my streets are at a certain percentage, which means they're going to be high on our list to go in here and get some repaving done. And once we can get everybody up on the same level of understanding what it takes for us to go into neighborhoods and do certain types of work, we're going to be a lot better off. All right. And another area, a department that, that your folks deal with is um, flooding oh, yes. and drainage oh, and yes. stormwater and yes. mosquito. I mean, you get all the fun stuff, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> We get all of the fun stuff, and I think it falls right back into uh, those one-on-one -on -one briefings. You've got to, if we can first get placed up on our website, uh, how we go about doing the business mm -hmm. and how a citizen can go about requesting the business. We have a lot of that on our website now, but we kind of want to change it just slightly just to make it a little bit more appealing and make it a, a, a lot simpler, if you will, so that it, it's not a struggle for anybody to go in and look at how they need to go about requesting this type of service. But yes, you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, the, the drainage issues, uh, again, some fantastic people that go out and handle these these problems for our community each and every day uh, but we always have to have a system in place for how we go about doing it so I call it having a preventative maintenance program as opposed to having a reactive maintenance program if we continue to just have a reactive program then we are find ourselves in crisis management from right. day to day and uh, that's not going to give anybody any real sense of predictability and that's what we want to try to put in place okay so I'm glad you and your family decided to stay in Hampton. Did you even move out of your house at Fort Monroe, or did you stay right where you were? Well, I am still on Fort Monroe. Just moved around the corner a little bit to, to get a little bit more of the, the water view. Ah, <laughs> you didn't have that before? I'm so surprised. I had, I there were so many generals. I was over a little bit. Yeah, there were a lot of generals. <laughs> but uh, certain houses opened up, and... Uh, we signed a lease with the Fort Monroe Authority, so uh, we're, we're really happy to, to, to be in Hampton, to, to still be on Fort Monroe, and uh, it, it is just a, it's just a great place to be, and, and it's just kind of all falling in place. That's great. We're glad to have you, and I want to have you back, because I think part of letting people know what you're doing is to delve a little deeper and to talk about specific projects or specific plans that each of your many divisions has. So. You're going to be a frequent guest. I hope that's okay. I, it is fine. And what I'd also like to do, I, uh, hopefully some of my division leaders will, be, will get a chance to see this show, and I'd like to get some of them on to actually talk specifically about the work that they do for our communities because uh, that's where the rubber meets the road for me. And uh, as I said before, uh, I've, just, I've said it in uniform, and I'll say it now while I'm sitting here in civilian clothes. I was blessed with a fantastic group of people in uniform. I am again blessed with a fantastic group of people in public works. 
You are. And the rest of the city administration, too. I know oh, that's part of the reason I came. Is they that have teamed up with me. Fantastic. So mm. proactive and transparent and wanting that citizen input. Um, I just I think it's an amazing place to work. Oh, absolutely. My peers at the uh, at, at City Hall, all the people that have welcomed me with open arms. It's it's been amazing. I'm kind of wondering when the honeymoon stops, uh, <laughs> but I'm busy enough uh, so that uh, we have enough in front of us to uh, to get done. But uh, we're excited about the work that we're going to do for the citizens of Hampton. Good. Thank you so much for coming by, Tony. Thank you I very appreciate much. it. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching this episode of Round Robin. I hope you'll come back as well.